all you beautiful people out there in the dark. Hi. Whoa, I had the wrong camera on, didn't I? Yeah, I was thinking of this one. How you doing out there? Hello, hello. Glad to be back. Happy to be back. Terry Arden, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer here today. And happy to be back. Hi. Yeah, we're a little windy outside. Um, you can see that right here. And I thought I'd share that with you as I cut to this side. Um, I went on a very special vacation. Many of you may have known that. Many of you may not have known that. Many of you may be saying, hey, Terry, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer, what about your dad? Uh, so all of that will be answered. I will answer that for you guys uh, today if you want to. But yes, I am Terry Harden. I am Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer. Uh, I am a uh, Henson Muppeteer. I am an uh, internationally trademarked artist and speaker. There are so many other things that I do. Feel free to Google me, Terry Harden, and you'll see what I do. And then on my Ask Me Anything Fridays, which will happen this Friday, uh, you can ask me questions if you want. But uh, I'm here today saying I have returned. Da, 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 yay! Um, and I've returned because uh, I was on a vacation. And that vacation was to celebrate the retirement for my dear, sweet, wonderful, adorable husband. Um, I really worked hard to create a very special uh, celebratory retirement event for him. He's not a party guy, so having a gathering with a bunch of people eating cheese and crackers and little nibbles like a Christmas party, especially since Christmas just happened pretty much, uh, is not his cup of tea. Um, more of a quiet guy and uh, uh, often really loves to be the wizard behind the curtain. Someone who does the magic that you see here, the setup that I have here, where I've got um, I've got this camera set up, and this is a lovely calendar from tribe member uh, Jim Jim and tribe members uh, Jim and Lee Van Austin Bridge, and they make these beautiful calendars, and they sent me one, and the very first page is Dumbo, which is one of my favorite uh, uh, ride vehicles and creators of all. So there you go. Isn't that beautiful? So this camera, and then we have this one. Hey, what's up? What's up? And uh, all of this switching and changing was done for me, age 65 Terry, uh, by my beautiful husband who managed to allow me to simply reach over to a magical piece of equipment right here, which you can't see, and cut to anywhere I want to be. Um, also, it allows me to show you some things here, which I will do in a moment. Um, let me just go back and show you. Um, one of the things that I got to do that I'm so happy with here is the picture that uh, was on our feed today. Uh, this is the part of the exhibit at MoMA, Metropolitan Museum of Art. And um, and uh, it's the Pinocchio exhibit, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. These are face replacement heads. This is only one box of many boxes, hundreds of face replacements for our dear little Pinocchio character. Eyes were also separate, as you can see with the faces they replaced, but then the eyes were also replaceable. And if you've seen the film, you'll know that his eyes are very expressive, expressive even though they're in wood, and then the facial expression. But the reason the pizza box is here is because the... Um, the main person at MoMA, uh, Guillermo managed to arrange for me, Guillermo del Toro managed to arrange for me to go and see this and meet with this wonderful man, Sean. And uh, he said that the, uh, that the event was speedy, was like last minute, and they had to rush and uh, to make this exhibit happen in New York, which goes through April. So if you live in New York and you want, you've got to go see this. It is absolutely an incredible show. 
And uh, But all of the faces of Pinocchio came in this delicious pizza box. This is how all of the people that worked on the film carried the faces that you see here in this in pizza boxes, pizza boxes, pizza boxes, pizza boxes. And as Sean also explained to me, um, let me just shrink it down. Here we go. A quote that is very important. Animation is a medium, not a genre. Um, and then some, some different color uh, studies. So all kinds of cool things at this uh, exhibit. And uh, if you are West Coast and you're saying, wow, I'd really like to see it, but I don't see a plane to New York in April, by April in my future, it is coming to the West Coast. And I believe it's going to be Portland, Oregon, which is where they actually did a lot of the actual shooting of the making of this film. So uh, it's a stop motion film. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's brilliant. And Guillermo managed to get me tickets. I had called, I had emailed him to see if he wanted to have a coffee if he was in New York. And instead he was so nice. He gives me tickets and it's like, Guillermo, you don't have to give me tickets. I'm going to see it. But he was like, nope. And uh, he made arrangements for that. And I got to meet Sean, which was a real treat because Sean explained to me that uh, Guillermo came in kind of in a whoosh, right? And uh, the animators posed the characters in all of the exhibits. So the, uh, the animators slash actors, and if you heard Guillermo speak on Pinocchio, you'll know that he told each forgive me, stop motion animator that these characters were not puppets. They were actors. And so were the animators who helped them come to life. So these people came in and actually posed them for the exhibit. And so it, they're beautifully posed. Then his lighting crew, the lighting crew for the film, actually went to MoMA and lit it like they lit it for the movie. And you guys will just be dazzled. The lighting is exquisite. It really gives you a great mood, a great feel. And the exhibit is spectacular. So if you happen to be in New York and can get over to MoMA, please do not hesitate to make it a, a definite stop and see um, at, the, at the Museum of Modern, Mar Modern Art. Uh, it's there through April, as far as I know. It was really a blessing. I took my husband for his special thing. Now, why New York, you may be asking? Well, um, I my, my husband about a year ago, maybe two years ago, said to me, I want to do something that doesn't deal with video, video screens, video cameras, cameras. You know, he was an editor, a very, a very good editor. Also, in my opinion, a very good filmmaker and documentarian, although he'll go, eh, you know, but he's very modest. But, uh, but he said he just didn't want to be in front of screens using keyboards. You know how it is if you guys do this. It can be exhausting if you've done it for over 40 years. And, and although you're really good at it, when you're retired, is this what you want to continue to be doing? You ask yourself. What would I rather continue to be doing? Some of you will reach out and say, I don't see myself retiring at all. Quite frankly, I don't see it. Or Terry, do you ever retire? Well, I don't believe an artist ever fully retires, but there will be some changes in my life. I am going to be tapering down and readjusting because I want to spend a lot more time with my husband. He's home every day now, and this is a joy for me to have him and to be with him. So I want to spend time with him and I want to spend time with him creating. So the two of us sat down and had a discussion and he said he would love to learn to do something that did not involve lenses or keyboards or monitors or any of that. And if you're in this industry, you may just feel the same way. And if you don't, I'm sure you still understand, right? So uh, enter YouTube. And you got to admit, even if you're someone who doesn't like social media, that YouTube is remarkable. And uh, you can learn just about anything on there. There's so many wonderful uh, people on there that teach you some great stuff, help you learn some great things. Uh, it's not all about cat videos. However, those cat videos do give you a nice laugh when you're feeling melancholy. So keep those cat videos coming. But uh, but the point is that 
uh, there's a lot to learn through YouTube. And he came across coffee. He likes coffee. Uh, he enjoys coffee. And I had been cleaning our garage and we came across what's called the Europe Piccolo. And it is a lever uh, espresso machine. Very old fashioned. He brought it back in the 70s, I think he told me. Uh, when he was in Italy, he fell in love with it. And he brought it back. So he found it. He took it to a guy. The guy fixed it. And he started to learn about create pulling. They call it pulling. I'm pretty sure they do. Espresso shots. And he worked hard at it. He he was very careful not to spend too much money, but he learned that the it's the many coffee people said it's in the way you grind the beans, that the grinding is more important than the actual pulling of the coffee. Some believe this way. Others said you need to weigh. Others said you need to tap. There's tampers that are, which is a little uh, heavy thing, metal and wood handle on top. And the way you do it, create it, it it's incredible how in-depth this is. So for a year, I'd say eh, mid-pandemic through 2021, he's been tinkering with this. He's a tinkerer and he loves tinkering with this. Has nothing to do with the keyboard. It does have some digital readouts like the, the, the you have to weigh, uh, a lot of people weigh their, their the, the coffee. They, first they weigh the uh Oh, I can't remember what it is. He'll be saying, this is what it's called. Uh, he'll weigh it and then he they cancel it out and then you put the coffee in it and you want it to be a certain amount. There's, a, there's like a formula and everything. Anyway, he watched uh, hundreds of videos, I think, and put this together. And then he would serve me his experiments, his coffee. Now, here's the problem, guys. I drink tea. And it was very important. I mean, think about the people that you love when they come up to you and their eyes are big and round and they're holding something and they're like, can you tell me what you think? Right. Can you tell me what you think? And you're like, uh, I can, but, but I knew he needed more from me than just, I mean, I do sip coffee, but I'm not, a, you know, but anyway, long story short, this is what we did in New York. We went to New York. I, I wanted to do something for him and for him alone. And so I auditioned about 10 coffee studios across the country and it came down to two people, one on the West coast, one on the East coast. And I fell in love with the one on the East coast. So then I spoke with some friends who had lived in New York or had gone to New York. And they said, January is the perfect time to go to New York because New York is exhausted from the holidays and appreciates you popping in and saying hello to them after the dust is cleared and the craziness is happening. And we found this to be true. Um, you get some magical prices in January and February. You can see theater shows, although we did not. Um, just, just lovely. They just had a wonderful time. And the weather, I tend to bring my weather with me. I'm from California. So they had warmer weather. So they were wearing tennis shoes and and they weren't wearing t-shirts, although some were. Um, but most people in New York were wearing um, tennis shoes and light jackets. They didn't have to have the big winter coats and the big fluffy scarves and the boots and everything because it was warmer. It was over 50 degrees a couple of days. So it was really special. Everyone was happy. No ice, no snow, beautiful weather. Um, it was fantastic. And uh, I spoke with an award-winning, uh, I spoke with an award-winning um, uh, barista and uh, her main thing is to do those beautiful cappuccino, uh, um, latte arts, not cappuccino, latte arts. And uh, she's very, very talented. And uh her, her name is Sean, and we we I spoke with her, and I said to her, "Hey, can you help me out here uh, with this class?" And so for two full days, Lindsay was a private student, and he trained. Well, the thing I got as a "you did good, kid" sign, which I believe in signs, was the MoMA event. Uh, someone on Facebook posted that MoMA they had gone to it, and when I looked it up, it was going through April, and I thought this is a sign I did the right thing. Boop, 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 boop. So it was wonderful. Wednesday we went and we walked through the museum. It was beautiful. Uh, had a nice meal with one of the producers of Outrageous Pumpkins. Joyful time. And uh, uh, it was just, it was just, it was just lovely. 
So um, I will um, show you again uh, a few things, but like I said, I want to be sure that I don't show you too much so you can go and see it. But here's the cricket. One of the things that makes Terry really happy about this is that the characters are small. And I want to do some of this stop motion animation, but I have very limited space. So I want a small, want to be able to do a lot in a small area. In the beginning, my husband and I are going to be practicing. We're not going to do these massive sets. But if I sweep over here, you can see how small this little guy is. So I was absolutely overjoyed. Absolutely overjoyed at the size of the, the, the cricket, what I do. And uh, that made me thrilled. That made me super, super happy. Here's another one where I'm putting my hand up next to one of the characters. And you can see how wonderfully, wonderfully small they are. So uh, super excited about that. And, uh, and then some things were super, super teeny, like check this out. Look at this little, this little guy right here who is, um, who, I mean, and I'm looking at the armature, you know, I like the shadows on the wall, everything about it. But again, he's like this, you know, he's, <laughs> I'm like, yay. Uh, so the show was just spectacular. And then um, if you have seen some video on Pinocchio, if you're like me and you're, you're really kind of excited about this movie that you can barely breathe, I'm just going to go through here and show you a couple of things that are super cool um, that you'll like a lot. Uh, this is in the MoMA Museum, hanging above us, the giant Pinocchio puppet. So uh, this puppet is like, I can't even fit my arms in the screen. He's so huge, super huge. And if you see the movie, you will understand why. I mean, he's very, very big. So the reason he's got to be so big, and you can see here that the cricket is inside the little hole because the cricket's home is inside Pinocchio. Pinocchio made from a tree, right? So there you go. There it is, the cricket inside. But in order for the cricket to be animated properly, the, the Pinocchio had to be absolutely gigantic. Okay, so the body is about this way, and then the head was about this, this big. So big, 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 so that the cricket, which is big, big, can be animated against the wood texture of Pinocchio. So they talked about the various... You got to see the size differences. You got to see the shapes and things. It's a show that's really worth you seeing. And then the other thing I should point out to you is that um, is that uh, it was a production that lasted over ten years. And so many when 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 you're making a film using stop motion animation, there are a ton of stages, and so. They had to have a way of keeping track of that. So when Terry goes to these things, when she gets lucky enough to see these exhibits, she's always taking pictures of things that will help her to organize because this is where I falter. And if you look at this chart, this is a chart that shows who is doing what, where. So on the left, you see the yellow, the red, the blue, and the orange. This is a representation, and this is one of many boards but this is a representation of the studios. What studio, in what colored section, should you need to go find, check, or for any reason you need to get to these people, you need to speak to these, speak to these people. Maybe you saw dailies or the a little bit of the film and you want to talk to them about maybe a reshoot or whatever you want to talk to them about. This is a real quick way to take a look and see who's where. And they're post-it notes so that they can be removed and switched around. And I, I love this board. I adore this board. And um, I absolutely adore this board. And it'll tell you scenes and all kinds of yummy, yummy stuff. So I was taking pictures of that sort of thing. My husband was taking pictures of not only that. You know, when you're in a museum like this or a place where you can both take pictures, take pictures, it's really good for both of you to be taking pictures because your, your, your mind and your eye is going to look differently. You're going to take things in a different way because your thinking is different.
right? So me, I, I um, honestly like to take pictures of uh, not only the pieces, don't get me wrong, but how the pieces work. So what is the wood underneath that built the set? What is the back behind the set look like as far as construction? This is one here where if you take a look at it here, do you see the modular bottoms on this? So being a puppeteer, I'm all about modular, but you can see that there's a board that goes across the bottom and then the floor is made up of modular units that can be, let me just show you where I am, can be pulled out shifted and moved around depending on what part of the stage needs to be shot for camera, right? Um, and you'll see uh, above here uh, a monitor where they can look and see how their animation is going and then um, angles for camera units and stuff. Like here's a light unit right here. Um, very cool. So I wanted to, uh, what's that light, honey? What's this light, honey? You know, so I'm taking pictures because am I going to copy this? No, but maybe I will copy in a way, or if I'm doing something, maybe I'll make a modular floor where I can turn things and move things. When you don't, when you're just starting out in stop motion, and that will be me, um, it's really great to look at someone who's a pro like all of these people to see what they did. Are we going to duplicate it exactly? We don't have the budget. But what we do have is uh, we understand better what it really takes to do it and the patience that it takes to do it. and How are things anchored? So um, let me see. Uh, this is the what was exciting for me is how are these things anchored? How are they held? What what uh, how is the interlocking handling? Do, is the face replacement or is the face, you know, something else and so on and so forth? Um, that's what's really cool about the whole deal. And again, I'm going to show you back here. Uh, here is behind one of the sets. So most people aren't going to take these pictures. Um, my husband probably would, but I won't. So this shows me uh, the back and how they did the little lights for inside the set. So you can see it also has writing on it that talks about um, what it, the wall is so that if they're stacked, you can read. Um, this stuff is all very, very important when you are working on a film. All these little details can be very, very helpful uh, ways that they attach, like this this uh, uh, screw. I, wanted, I went a little bit too high, so let me just bring it. There you go. See these screws right here? That's how the walls are put together and attached through these systems that can move around and stuff. And then the wiring and it's taped and, and then down below is probably a little, you know, generator battery or something. But this is one of the things that I did. So uh, this is just because I want to do stop motion in the future and I want to see what a professional does and how a professional handles it. So there you go. That's just a taste of MoMA. And uh, I will show you one more thing that you might like. Um, we were in Chelsea and Chelsea was just beautiful. I happen to be someone who likes to be high up. It's just my thing. So I will show you some beautiful shots of, um, of us being high up. I just had to shoot them. So here are this, we're on the 20th floor looking out into the beautiful New York skyline. Isn't that beautiful? I'm so excited about that. I really love that a lot, a lot, a lot. So, um, so we took several pictures like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I can also show you, um, I'll show you a couple of the classes. So, um, I'll just kind of share with you some of the, just a taste of the class. So here is Lindsay's teacher. Um, and she is, 
we're actually at the roasting facility in Queens. And here she's sharing with my husband uh, a piece of software that helps them to roast their coffees and how that assists them in knowing what the roaster is doing and how the roaster is behaving as the beans go through their process. And uh, so, yeah, he learned that. He learned how to, uh, he learned an awful lot about so many cool things that uh, it was great. It was great to just see him happily enjoying um, what he was doing. She, she and he just uh, sat and worked and worked. He asked questions. They taste coffee. Um, let's see what we got here. Um, we had to be careful because uh, here she is in her instruction studio um, instructing him. And you can see that I'm back a ways because we want to make sure that the two of them can be in the conversation and he can ask his questions and he can do uh, what he needs to do to ask the question. So there you go, guys. That's kind of his coffee experience. He loved it. He had a great time. And uh, so did I, knowing that uh, he was happy. And uh, we enjoyed New York. We had a lovely meal. Uh, many of you know I do a show called Outrageous Pumpkins. And uh, I met one of my producers there. And uh, the amazing Corey and we had dinner together, uh, an early dinner because she had to go to the theater. So she met us outside of MoMA and then we walked over to a lovely French restaurant that had gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, it was beautiful. Very elegant. Um, the first time we actually drank alcohol. So uh, it was it was it was really special. Now, you've heard me tell you that I have been under a lot of strain because of my dad. Well, my dad is doing better. In fact, while I was in New York, they took out the feeding tube and he is progressing nicely. We're going to go see him in a little bit. So I'm so excited about that. But I will tell you that it was the doctors who told me that this was the perfect time for us to scoot to New York. They had him. We got him. He's improving. And we know how to get reach you if we need to. And they only called to tell me the tube came out and dad was doing well and speaking and uh, I actually called him when I got back, and now I get to go see him today. So uh, exercising all of the protocol that I like to do. So even though I felt very safe and, and was very careful on our trip uh, in New York and on the plane, I made sure that we had three or four days of just being together ourselves, Lindsay and I, when we got back to make sure we didn't show any symptoms of COVID-19. Because the last thing you want to do is go and give it to your dad in the hospital, which we were wearing masks there, of course. But just to be safe, want to make sure uh, that you, you protect those around you. So that's what we did. And it was lovely. Uh, we're feeling good. We'll probably take a test before we go because that's wise. And, um, and yeah, uh, <laughs> um, very exciting. Just very, you know, so we were very, I was very tired. Once the trip was over, I like crashed because I, I obviously had some stress, you know, but, uh, but it was really a cool trip. We had a great time and, uh, yeah, yeah. Some magic happened. Some real magic happened. Uh, so let's see how you guys are doing. I'll, I'll, I just wanted to share with you, uh, dad's doing better. I want to make that clear. And now when I go and see him, we'll talk to them, make sure, you know, but I've had a lot, you know, I'm, I'm taking care of my dad's bills, making sure they get paid. My bills get paid Medicare. Cause I'm 60, I'm 65 and a half. And my husband retired at the end of the year and we had to make sure we had healthcare. So Medicare, dee -dee. Uh, was a part of it. And it's not easy. Let's, let's, let me tell you, they tell you it's easy. Yeah. Uh, get assistance because it's, uh, but uh, there was that also end of year. I have sales tax to pay. I have property tax to take care of. Uh, and then also I've got to work a new budget because we are now retired. So there is a lot of stuff that an artist hates to do, hates to do but I got to do it. It's my job. And, um, and then as soon as I can, which I want it to cut off in January so that I can get back to my art because I have a lot of 
a lot of deadlines that have are really struggling because, you know, when my dad got sick, I just didn't care about anything. I mean, I apologize if you've got a deadline with me, but they, my parents took top priority. I could not think, think of anything else, but my, but my dad. And um, now that he is on the mend, I can start to, there are still some things I have to deal with doctors. Like, is he going to need physical therapy? Is he going to need to convalesce for a while? These are some of the things that I have to think about as well, amongst everything else and my deadlines as well. So um, my husband is there uh, squeezing my shoulders and saying, just breathe. You're only one person. Two eyes, two ears, one mouth, and one heart. And uh, he knows I like to do everything. So he's like, you got to rest. And um, the tribe said the same thing. And I would be lax if I did not share with you Terry's tribe. So let me just share with you uh, how to be a part of Terry's tribe, which is an amazing, amazing community of like-minded people, very positive, very into the arts of all levels, but you don't have to be. Definition of an artist is one who is passionate about what they do, and that can be anything. So I hope you'll consider joining us. It's just $5 a month, and uh, we'd love to have you. We have a big deal coming up February 1st with a major person uh, on a Zoom call, and we'd love to have you join us if you want to. Uh, Dip a toe in the water and see if you like it. That's a private Zoom call for uh, Terry's Tribe only. So um, if you're interested, check this out and, um, and think about it. We'd love to have you. Your voice needs to be heard. Okay? All righty. Let's go hear what you have to say so I can rest a little bit and see how you're doing. Hi, Diane. Yay. I know. I'm so glad to be. I, I want to thank you all for just giving me permission to rest and not worry about you guys on social media. I, I automatically do that. My husband, I didn't even take my computer to New York. I left it home, which was weird. You know, I had my phone, but I don't like doing stuff on the phone. It's like little, 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 too small. Um, so I don't like that. And uh, I had my iPad, um, but I didn't even open it. Um, I just, I just wanted it to be all about Lindsay. And um, he said, no one had ever done that before. And, you know, someone is taking the yoke of work for all those years so that you can play in clay and do what you love. That's, that's, that's a big sacrifice. So I'm so grateful. And, uh, that he did a job that he was okay with, um, but not loving. And so, uh, this coffee thing, he was so, he said, I would have never thought of this. And now he's so excited. He's got notes and, uh, they sent us home with coffee. He got a special pitcher that you steam milk in maybe when you go to a coffee house, you see how they do that thing. Well, a, a, a proper barista will show you what not to do with sound. And unfortunately, most of the people at Starbucks do all of the things you're not supposed to do, but uh, it's great. It's great. Um, you, your, your mind is opened at the fact that coffee can taste fruity. Did any of you know that? Like we, had a coffee combination that tasted like, you're not even going to believe this, strawberry yogurt. When she said it tasted like strawberry yogurt, I thought she was crazy. And then we took a sip. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. No bitter bite at the end. No sour. If you're one of those people like a smooth cup, this was smooth and fruity. Wow. It was incredible. Yeah. And it taught my palate too, because she'd bring me in and the reason I asked her to do that is that I could have a sip and she would tell me what I'm looking to taste and if I could identify it or she'd ask me to identify it first. So that way, when Lindsay is experimenting at home, he has someone to bounce off that doesn't just drink, <laughs> doesn't just drink <laughs> tea. Uh, so it was very cool. It was very, very, very cool. It was a lot of fun. So, yeah. And I am happy to be back too, Diane. Morning, Nate. Hello, Bob Berdeen. I love the Disney. Yeah, he he did one for me last week, last year too. And I was looking at it going, I don't want to take it down because I miss not having my, my, my calendar. And uh, uh, he sent me another one. So I'm really super grateful, grateful. Um, I have an apartment, so I will, appointment. 
not apartment, appointment. Please do. Please watch later. And because you're a tribe member, it'll be on the tribe too. So you can go directly to the Patreon page and see it there too, because I want to post them there. Yep, I am. Yes, I, uh huh. Yes, I am. No, yes, I am. <laughs> Good morning, Cindy. Uh, Nate says, definitely would love to see the exhibit if it comes near me. Um, yeah, just, just, you know, check out Pinocchio exhibit MoMA and then see, you know, you could always call and say, do you know where it's going to be? Or they might have gotten time to put a web page up. This happened so fast that, uh, it's, you know, the actual people came in and did this. Now I know they're going to do that in Portland because you may or may not know that most of. Pinocchio was done in Portland because a great deal of stop motion animation studios are in Portland. And those animators who weren't came up to Portland because they had, they needed a lot of people. You saw that board. Yeah. And that's just one of many. Okay. That was the example board. So, uh, so yeah. So Portland will probably have the same kind of cool lighting techniques. Maybe by then they'll have more to see. You know, and why not see it a couple times? You know, I'm on the West Coast. I may just lock my little self up there and see it, you know. So, yeah. So it's a great it's 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 a great opportunity to see it. I hope it goes to Vegas so people can see it in Vegas because all planes go to Vegas. Evan says, did you hear Disney is casting a lookalike performer for the live action aerial for the parks? No, I didn't. Uh, OK, is that a good idea? I don't know. What do you think? Evan, you seem excited. <laughs> Cindy says, coffee and tea is very interesting and complex. My ex-husband loved coffee. I love tea. Researched, we researched a lot about both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, one of the things about coffee is that because it's got caffeine, like alcohol has, you know, like wine has alcohol, you're allowed to spit. Did you guys know this? You can take a sip of coffee, roll it around in your mouth. And if you're someone who doesn't want to have too much caffeine from drinking cup after cup after cup, you can swirl it around and spit like you do in wine. I, I don't know this. <laughs> so I learned some great stuff. Yeah, some great stuff. And uh, it was lovely. It was lovely. Hello, Tim Gillette. Let me look in my book. I know we have missed each other and missed each other and missed each other. I have so much to talk to you about. It isn't funny. Um, but Tim, let me just look in my calendar with my dad and things like that. Nope, nope, nope. Looks like I'm free. So I will see you if you are. I'm going to write your you in here because it's so important. Um, I'm not sure you're having one, but you usually do, but I've been missing them. And I really wanted to go the last one, but I went and saw my dad instead. Usually this is what happens. Tim Gillette is going to see my father um, because he is still in the hospital, although no longer in intensive care. Yay. So I will keep you up to date minute by minute. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Yes. Uh, well, hello there, Terry, move your head over to the side. I'm trying to scan the QR code. There it is. But I don't know if you can do it. I mean to move this. I'm going to move this closer. So if it doesn't work today, I'm going to move it closer. In fact, I saw some people put it on a card, like, and you could do it like, like down here. I, that's one of my questions for Tim Gillette, actually, is how to get my QR code so people can play with that while I'm yapping. <laughs> so look at you being so smart. You know, Demetrius, you're so good. Thank you, Demetrius. That's cool. Stop motion is so awesome. I can't wait to see you guys process and finish project. Yeah, we are going to do things like, okay, when you do something new in stop motion, it's really a good idea. Maybe you know this or maybe you don't, Demetrius and others, is uh, you don't start with saying, I'm going to do the story of Cinderella. Stop motion. That's a big project right? You don't even say, Hey, I think I'll, I'll write a short story and tell a short story where you start is practice. So you take your character and you get him all rigged. And then you say, test one, uh, carry a box in, set the box on a chair. Look at it. Yeah. 
done. Something like that. Or, oh, what's that on the ground? Reach down, pick it up, examine it. Huh. Done. Walk cycles. How do they walk? Walk, 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 run, 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 run. Walk slow, slide, and cut. So we're going to do a lot of these tests. And this is going to be a lot of fun because then we will have a video journal of some of the things that we did with notes attached on how we did it. So this is really fun. We also have tons of books on the subject and we have friends who do it, who have said they would be willing to work with us and help us to get an idea of what we're looking for and how we can achieve that which we need to. So many of the times on my in my tribe and sometimes here, I'm encouraging you to look at your friend list, not necessarily on Facebook or social media, but your, 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 your friends. Take a look at your friends. Many of your friends might be involved in something that you would like to do. And then you reach out to them and say, hey, I'm looking to learn how to do this. Can you help me? And then you say, if there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. And you sort of trade a cool thing to do. And I've loved that. I've done that all the time. I've done that all the time. In fact, I even did this with this trip this coffee trip is I made a trade. So um, that's fun to do that barter system and always say, if I can do for you something because you've done a great deal for me, I'd like to repay you in some action or way, shape or form, you know, um, it's a great way to do it. And then you can say, Hey, I have been to work. I've worked with, you know, so-and-so and such and such. They do stop motion. Let me reach out to them and see if they'll give me a couple of minutes of their time and walk me through some of the basics I need to know about stop motion animation. And then I'll want to, maybe I'll make a little test film, take it to them and say, can you look at this and critique it? You see? So that's the fun thing about, you know, you have someone who paints and you want to paint, maybe they paint in acrylics and you say, Hey, I want to do this painting. What do you think? What can I do? How can I improve? Or uh, can you walk me through a basic, a basic starting point, you know? So uh, don't look too far beyond the people that you know and care about because you never know. Might be just the ticket to getting to the next spot that you want to get to. Someone is selling water from Splash Mountain on eBay. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> and how do you know? <laughs> I mean, seriously, how do you know? <laughs> water from eBay, water from Splash Mountain. <laughs> yeah, I'm not buying it. Uh, <laughs> oh, Evan, you are full of great little uh, uh, things. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, very awesome. Wow. Okay. Let's see what else. Thanks for sharing your behind the scenes and how the process goes. Thank you. Well, and we'll be doing more of that because, you know, what you're seeing on the screen is not, it's like if you've ever watched Puppeteers, the you may love seeing Kermit the Frog. And I, of course, I'm going to use the Muppets. Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy and Fozzie do their thing. But what's really fun is looking below them at Frank and Jim and puppeteers as they navigate their full bodies around the tiny bodies of the puppet characters. Really fun to see what's underneath and watch, watch how they maneuver and manage to do a scene like Muppet, Muppet uh, Christmas Carol or Muppet Haunted Mansion or, uh, you know, the Muppet movie, which I was a part of the ensemble in that, um, you know, you watch how that, you know, because under each puppet is a person under, if it's a big group scene, sometimes a puppeteer has one on each end, but a lot of times it's just a bunch of us like this and you got to put this somewhere. <laughs> so it's cool. This behind the scenes to me is the best. It's, it's, it's the best part of a movie is how did you do that? What did you have to do? How did you have to do it? What'd you have to go through to get that? to be accomplished. Wow, that wind is picking up. Let me show you. Look at it go. Woohoo! Cowabunga, dude. Um, it's going to be a windy day. It means the air is going to be fresh and crisp. 
my dad will have a great view because he's kind of high up at the at the VA. I posted the screenshot uh, on the tribe for eBay. Oh, I'll I'll look at that. I'll look at the tribe and take a look at that. Yeah, I saw the last day of Splash Mountain going before it's eliminated from. I look like Walt Disney World. Yeah, was that where it was? Um, a shame, a shame. But if any of you know where I can get my rabbit, I did the rabbit, Br'er Rabbit, riding on the front of the boat. Uh, let me know. See that available. I'd be very interested to, to get one for my collection. Um, there you go. That's that's my that's my confession for the day. Water from splash makes no sense. Shows people will collect it. Well, it hasn't sold yet, Bobby. <laughs> I just want to know how they authenticate water from splash. <laughs> you know, stand by. Poosh, okay, this shirt and these glasses. <laughs> Got splash by splash. I know I shouldn't tease about it, but that is kind of silly, I think. I mean, I think it's do you think it's silly? I think it's silly. Anyway, I think it's kind of silly. Uh, you know, water from splash, especially since the same water will be used in the new ride. <laughs> oh, Evan, you're so funny. <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? I guess that's what the eBay or seller is doing. If it doesn't sell, he'll just take the little vials and pour them back in, you know, mix it up a little. I don't know. Funny, funny, funny. Well, guys, it's 1028. We have been here just under an hour. I love you guys so much. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here for my return. Please go to patreon.com slash Terry Harden and see if you'd like to be a part of our page and part of our tribe. Uh, there's a lot happening. I'm working really hard to bring you a lot for your $5 a month. So, uh, but what you can bring to me is your voice, your thoughts, your heart, your feelings, as we continue to build the community of Terry's tribe of people supporting people and people helping people. There are so many different walks of life in this tribe that it is so worth it. I can't even tell you. All right. More than tongue can tell. And, uh, and I am there every Monday and Friday. I broadcast live like this for the tribe. And then on um, Wednesdays and sometimes Mondays, I do a Zoom call exclusively with them and they can go from one to three hours. And that's us talking live. You talk, I talk, that sort of thing. So consider it for your $5 uh, price of one Starbucks. will give you a whole month of uh, fun. And then uh, there's other tiers as well. Uh, I'm working on to getting those tiers filled up so that if it's something you would be interested in um, doing, it's a little more per month to get in some of those tiers. Don't do it yet unless you feel like I'm giving more than $5 worth and you're doing it out of the goodness of your heart. But honestly, um, there's one at $25. It's a tutorial tier that I'm going to be working on just as soon as I put January to bed and get some uh, get my deadlines taken care of. Then I will focus on the stuff that I want to do this coming year for the people on my Patreon page for my tribe. Okay? Love you guys a lot. Look at that beautiful heart from Michelle Dwinell. Guys, do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. I can't tell you how I felt like a five-star ultra first class human being when I saw my husband and how much he enjoyed his retirement gift really, really made me so happy to see the joy on his face because no one has ever made it about him. And, uh, I'm glad that I could do that because actions speak louder. Don't they, you can tell a person you love them, give them a hug and all that, but it's what you do that makes a difference. It's what you do. It's your actions that show it. Okay? All right. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Glad I'm back. Look at this. $150 for four ounces of water. Yeah, no. No. And no. All right. Hugs and kisses, everyone. Mwah! I will see you soon. I will see you Friday for Ask Me Anything Friday. <laughs> Adam, you just got in there, buddy. And for those of you who didn't post and talk, I know you're out there. And these are for all you lovely people out there in the dark. Uh, uh, know that I still care about you, even if you're too uh, shy to post. Okay. All right. I love you guys. Hugs, loves. We'll see you soon. Look at that. And the phone ringeth. <laughs>